other. Hi, Shiros and Heroes. Today we're going to talk about, um, we are going to have a little coaching session actually. And <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will talk That's about limiting beliefs. So this is Bianca's job, definitely. <laughs> so um, Looking for Yeah. And, um, and last time we had, uh, we had, had a little bit video about, about the hero with a few exercises that you can do. So have a look what's available apart from that. But um, now, so we record this live. So well, that accounts for every little mistake we are going to, <laughs> we're going to make. So if, if you're watching this live, feel free to, uh, to, to participate in the, the questions, the, the exercises. And if you're not doing, if, you're, if you don't watch this live, then still feel free to write in the comments yeah. and share. If you're interested in the Hero Society program and what we stand for, otherwise, then just have a look at HeroCiety.com. And without further ado. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, please write in the comment or uh, in the chat um, during the live session if you have any comments. Or also, we will do a little exercise later on. So you, you have to, the option to write in the chat as well. Today, we are going to talk about limiting beliefs and what they are and how we can work with them. So basically, we have some core beliefs ingrained in ourselves and most beliefs are formed when we are children. So during uh, like, um, like growing up, we are influenced by our parents and the society in general. And um, what they does, what they do is they kind of um, like, so, so we have these beliefs and we, they become part of ourselves, part of who we believe we are, our, our identity in a way. So we defend those beliefs also, um, which can actually lead to a way of seeing the world around us. We'll get into that in more depth, but like, we see how we see the world is actually influenced by our beliefs. And if we in turn look for proof everywhere to support our beliefs, it's kind of a vicious cycle. If we have a negative belief or a limiting belief, then we don't do what is necessary to, to transform or to go beyond that belief. And we actually always find proof that we're not good enough or whatever is the case. So, uh, for example, I have a small story, like um, in the past, like since I was a child, I, I was allergic to milk and lactose and and I, actually any kind of dairy product. But um, I had this belief that in order to fit in, I had to kind of eat what everybody else, everybody, everybody else were eating. And... Um, I mean, that was kind of a, for me, like a social pressure, but it was actually the social pressure was put on myself by myself. And um, later, when I started reading books and taking courses about health and nutrition, I realized that my health is actually the foundation of everything that I do. And that, as a logical consequence of that, I needed to look into what I was eating and don't eat what I can't really tolerate or my body can't tolerate. So over time, I develop a new belief that I can choose whatever I want to eat for myself. I don't need to eat what other eat because I choose what is good for my body. And uh, if we go a bit further in the, into this thinking, there's um, a guy called Albert Ellis, he developed the ABC model. That's uh, from, from uh, psychology. And that the ABC model has three aspects. It's A is the activating event. And B is the belief. Um, and C is the consequence. And how they relate is that the activating event is something that you experience. And that triggers a belief in our, in our conscious mind. And that belief in turn um, creates some consequence, which is uh, the emotions we feel or 
even like how we react. So what is interesting about this model is that it basically says that the um, consequence, like the emotions that we feel are not directly related to the world we experience. Actually, we have this middle layer of beliefs. And if we can change those beliefs, we can change how we react to the world. And, um, and that's uh, an encouraging thought. The most basic limiting beliefs of the three core limiting beliefs, according to Marissa Peer, are the following. So not being good enough, but like the feeling I'm not good enough, that can lead to sabotaging everything that you do. So if I believe I'm not good enough, then maybe I say I will do something, but in the end I don't do it because I'm not good enough. So I have this kind of, um, I look at the world in the wrong way and I don't take action when needed. The next limiting, core limiting belief is the scarcity mindset. So that they're not enough resources for me. And that in turn um, creates this um, pattern of being over competitive and not thinking outside the box, always doing the same thing over and over and over. Um, the last one is uh, I'm different than the rest of the world. So I'm special in a, in a certain way. And that can lead to something like uh, me versus them thinking that I'm not fitting in. I can never fit in uh, the society or the family or whatever the context is. For example, one, one example that could be um, a person which is have all the skills and all the resources to fulfill a, like a, a dream project. But um, he never does it because he's, he feels he's not good enough. So there's always something that comes in the way and it leads to inaction in the, in the end. Um, yeah, and I was thinking like we could uh, maybe like look at an example of straight stage fright. So um, it could be that, for example, relating back to this ABC model. So the stage flight example could be something like you go up on a, you're going up on a stage and you look in the stage, it's empty and in front of the stage, a lot of people are sitting and watching um, excitingly. And that's kind of what activates this belief. And then the belief could be something like, um, I must be perfect in order to like, in order to perform this, or I cannot perform it on an, unless I do it perfectly. And then the consequence would be like anxiety. You start to your mouth dry, starts to dry up, and you start to shake because you have this. You're not like feeling well because you cannot fulfill um, this. Um, kind of ideal, idealistic picture that you put in your mind. Um, so yeah, that's an example. And I was thinking like, um, now, it's, now, it's, uh, now I have something so you can talk a bit again. So I have yes. like a small, <laughs> have like small exercise. I was thinking like, um, do you have like maybe some challenge of the past? Maybe it could involve some other people as well. Some challenging situation. Regarding stage fright. For example. Um, let me think. Yes. Yeah. Oh, go on. I have. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, for the listeners, um, you can do the exercise with us. So if you have any like challenging situation from the past, it can be related to uh, stage fright or it could be related to maybe a tense situation at your workplace or in your family or something like this. So think of a challenging situation of the past. What is it? Try to really visualize it in your mind. Okay, so you have something. Yeah, so a few months ago, I, I gave a, a workshop and I haven't, uh, I didn't do that particular workshop. I hadn't done it before. Mm. So I was kind of, I, I was very, very 
nervous how would it how would it turn out and i was uh, preparing as much as i as much as i could i always i always do that and still i i feel um as if i'm not quite prepared yeah not not enough it's never enough mm, yeah. so that's the situation okay very good and like can you think of like any like limiting beliefs from maybe something i we talked about today or anything that comes to mind that could like um, be present in that kind of situation and and for the listeners if you're doing this exercise with us whether you're doing it right now or later you can also try to think about from your situation like what can you identify some limiting beliefs in that situation something that between the the activating event and the thing that you're doing and the feeling you're having. So what is it that you believe? So, yeah. So I thought, I thought a little bit that I was a, a fraud because mm -hmm. I, um, I, I, I guess actually because I haven't done this workshop before. And even though it was very much about my own experience, and own experiences, I still felt as if I had to prepare much more, give much more and be completely prepared for any kind of question that might come mm. up, even though that would be not very, um, uh, even though there wasn't a, a big chance of this question coming up, I still prepared for yeah. it a lot. So like the belief that you like you believe that you are a fraud in a way. So in the and the consequence was that you had to be an expert. So you had to do everything like you over and over and it was never really good enough because you always have this feeling or this belief that you are a fraud in a way. True. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And so um, the next question is like, with the knowledge that you have nowadays, so it was a few months ago, mm -hmm. and like in between the few months ago and now, you, maybe you learned something about yourself or thought about the situation. And if you have anything like advice that you could give to yourself in that situation from the past or give to yourself in the past, what would that be? Try to think about that. And for the listeners out there, so try to think like with the knowledge that you have today, like could you give yourself from the past any advice in that situation? Well, I would say for on the one hand, it's it was very unlikely that I didn't know the answer to any to any of the, the question because I was mainly talking about my own experiences, telling stories about my my life to inspire those people I worked with and uh, giving them exercises and maybe listening to their their experiences doing this doing those exercises. So mm -hmm. I didn't need I, I, I didn't didn't need to be so nervous actually and actually most of the times when i felt like this like i'm being a fraud and i i have to prepare vigorously it mostly turned out that that the the, the things i was preparing for didn't even come up mm. and then i always um, i would now i would say to myself just be authentic mm -hmm. well no one can can blame you for not knowing everything ever yeah. so just be yourself but i guess that's, that's the most difficult yeah part but it's a, it's a good insight just be yourself and don't try to judge yourself is if you don't have the question for everything you don't need to be perfect or be the expert you're already the expert even though you don't know everything yeah. That's how I understand what you're saying. And then it's also about always, uh, always practicing. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's about uh, if you if you have something to criticize yourself for, then 
practice will always uh, will always set, but sometimes we are too critical. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So thanks for that. And uh, like, um, so the last thing I'm going to like, it's not a question. It's more like just try to reflect on on what you just said, and you can just do it in your in your mind. You, or if you have anything to say, you can say it out loud. But try to think about this advice that you gave yourself, and like um, try imagining that you give yourself that advice to a f- future self. Like in this, so imagine you have the same situation come out, a new workshop or something that you don't know the subject totally well, yeah. and you're starting to like, oh my God, I have to prepare a lot and stuff like this. So try to, how can you integrate this new insight in, in the future? And for the listeners out there, try to do the same for your kind of situation. Like think about as an advice for your past self and then try to integrate it into the future in a way that how can you use this knowledge that you you now have this new insight to improve the situation for the for the future of yourself hmm. well i always think it helps i i actually already tried to do that just telling myself i have to be authentic and hmm. Sometimes I, I don't remember and I, I, I forget. So, that's, I, that's okay. That's acceptable. And then when I feel uncomfortable with anything in any situation, I always I, I try to think of that I just need to be authentic and sincere and just be myself and nobody can blame me, mm. anyone actually, for that. Yeah. So this is a comforting story. It's, it's a, this is a comforting thought. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, also, nobody is perfect. So, th- I mean, that um, relates back to even though we try to heal our perfectionism by realizing we're not per- perfect, also, if we forget to do that, we also have to remember we're not perfect in that. So, it's it plays on an extra meta level in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think we have to wrap up for now. I hope you enjoyed the exercise. Um, Remember to check whether book club is coming up. Yeah, we, we always come- talk about uh, we talk about uh, kind of personal development books. Go yeah. through them, discuss them, and always have a little um, stories. Yeah, that we personal share. stories relating to the the subject of the book. So check if, if something is. Is coming up depending on when you watch when this. Watching this. Is, uh, but you can always uh, just go to uh, herosity.com slash book club or just herosity.com and click on the book club in the navigation bar. I will put a link in the description below so you can click there. Otherwise, otherwise, looking forward to see you at our next live session. Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice week. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.